The American Petroleum Institute presents basic bail-down testing procedures to measure LNAPL transmissivity. Transmissivity can be measured for unconfined, confined, or perched LNAPL, but we will focus on bail-down testing of unconfined LNAPL. This video was sponsored by the American Petroleum Institute and developed by Michael Hawthorne of Applied NAPL Science Review and H2A Environmental Limited. Key technical terms and acronyms used include top of screen or TOS and bottom of screen or BOS for the test well, air NAPL interface or ANI and NAPL water interface or NWI for the top and bottom of NAPL in the well respectively, apparent NAPL thickness or ANT gauged in the test well, mobile NAPL interval or MNI over which LNAPL flows in the formation and calculated groundwater surface, or CGWS, which is the groundwater elevation if LNAPL were not present. What is LNAPL transmissivity, and how does it relate to groundwater transmissivity? Groundwater transmissivity is the volume of groundwater that will flow across a unit width of the full thickness of a given aquifer under a unit hydraulic gradient in a unit amount of time. LNAPL transmissivity is the same thing for LNAPL. It is the volume of LNAPL that will flow across a unit width of the full mobile NAPL interval of a given aquifer under a unit NAPL gradient in a unit amount of time. Transmissivity is calculated by multiplying the average conductivity times aquifer thickness for both LNAPL and groundwater. The conductivity term accounts for the different LNAPL density and viscosity and the relative permeabilities of LNAPL and groundwater since both share the total available pore space. What is a bail-down test? Starting from equilibrium, the LNAPL in a well is removed causing a drop in the air NAPL interface and reduced apparent NAPL thickness. As LNAPL discharges from the formation to the well, the apparent NAPL thickness increases and drawdown decreases until they reach equilibrium. Drawdown and discharge are the two key parameters measured in a bail-down test. For unconfined LNAPL, drawdown is the difference between the equilibrium air NAPL interface and the air NAPL interface at any time t during the test. Discharge is calculated by measuring the change in air NAPL and NAPL water interfaces over time to get the change in apparent NAPL thickness. This change in thickness over time is multiplied by the area of the well to calculate the resulting volumetric LNAPL discharge. Drawdown and discharge can be visualized on a hydrograph. The air NAPL and NAPL water interface elevations are plotted on a linear time scale. The difference between them is the apparent NAPL thickness. Drawdown is the difference between the equilibrium air NAPL interface elevation and the air NAPL interface elevation at each gauging point. Discharge is calculated from the change in apparent NAPL thickness over time and the well construction dimensions. Weeks to days before a bail-down test, four questions must be answered. 1. What are the physical well dimensions? 2. What are the equilibrium air NAPL and NAPL water interface elevations and or the equilibrium apparent NAPL thickness value? 3. Is the mobile NAPL interval across the well screen? And 4. Do formation fluids freely flow into the well? The physical well dimension values needed include the top of screen or TOS elevation or depth, the bottom of screen or BOS elevation or depth, the borehole diameter, and the well casing and screen diameter. What are the equilibrium air NAPL and NAPL water interface elevations and apparent NAPL thickness? The air NAPL interface, or ANI, and NAPL water interface, or NWI, are gauged repeatedly over time, and the difference between them is the apparent NAPL thickness, or ANT. This gauging information over time is plotted on a hydrograph. These gauging trends provide the equilibrium air NAPL and NAPL water interface elevations and apparent NAPL thickness. Is the mobile NAPL interval across the well screen? The gauged air NAPL and NAPL water interfaces for unconfined L NAPL at equilibrium represent the boundaries of the mobile NAPL interval, or MNI, 
so long as the air napple and napple water interfaces are contained within the screened interval. If the equilibrium apparent napple thickness is in the screened interval, then the mobile napple interval must also be within the screened interval. Do formation fluids freely flow into the well? Drilling creates borehole damage, inhibiting the flow of fluids into the well. Development restores this fluid flow. Well development with movement of water in and out of the well via surging is often preferred. Minutes before a bail down test begins, three questions must be answered. One, are the air napple and napple water interfaces and the apparent napple thickness still at equilibrium? Two, is the mobile napple interval still across the well screen? And three, how much L napple should be removed from the well? The test well is manually gauged with an electronic interface probe, or EIP, to confirm the equilibrium and mobile napple interval data. Care must be exercised during gauging to ensure that the gauge depths to the air napple and napple water interfaces are accurate and precise within the limits of the electronic interface probe. This gauging data is then compared to the hydrograph to confirm that the L napple is at equilibrium air napple and napple water interface and apparent napple thickness conditions, and that the mobile napple interval is still across the screened interval of the test well. How much L napple should be removed? Typically, the target L napple removal volume is the full volume of mobile L napple in the well casing and filter pack. The volume in the well is called the casing volume, or V sub C, and the volume in the filter pack is called the borehole volume, or V sub B. These two volumes can be calculated independently with the simple geometry of two nested cylinders, along with the application of a specific yield value for drainable or mobile L napple from the filter pack. The cylinder volume equation is volume equals pi times r squared times height. The height is the thickness of L napple in the filter pack and well which for unconfined L napple at equilibrium is equal to the mobile napple interval thickness. The borehole and well casing radii are derived from their respective diameters. The two volumes are then added together to yield the total L napple target volume for removal. During a bail down test, four questions must be answered. One, is the apparent napple thickness recharged from the formation or the filter pack? Two, what is the maximum time for instantaneous L napple removal? Three, how often should the test well be gauged? And four, when is the test complete? The simplest way to minimize filter pack recharge is to remove the full well volume of L napple using either a hand baler or peristaltic pump. Hand bailing L napple from the test well has the advantages of simplicity and no external power requirements. As long as care is taken to minimize the inevitable water that will be baled along with the L napple, hand bailing is a perfectly acceptable L napple removal method for bail down testing. L napple may also be removed with a peristaltic pump. Typically, the intake tubing is secured to an electronic interface probe to facilitate placement of the intake in the L napple. The discharge tubing is then secured to a bucket or similar container to capture produced L napple in water. The pump is then energized to remove the L napple with visual confirmation of L napple pumping in the clear tubing and via the interface probe attached to the intake of the tubing. The volume of L napple baled or pumped should be measured to determine when the full well and filter pack L napple volume has been removed. The measuring device used should be capable of measuring the L napple volume to a precision of 10% of the volume being measured. For example, if one gallon of L napple is being measured, then the measuring equipment should be precise to at least one tenth of a gallon. One simple and readily available option is a measuring cup. Another option, particularly when measuring small volumes, is to use a graduated cylinder of the appropriate size and precision. In a pinch, 
A graduated bucket of the appropriate volume and precision may be crafted prior to testing either by carefully measuring and marking the bucket or by using a known volume at the required 10% limit of precision to fill and mark the bucket incrementally. This is particularly useful when dealing with large volumes. What is the maximum time for instantaneous LNAPL removal? This bail down test hydrograph shows that complete recharge occurred at 3,275 minutes. Instantaneous LNAPL removal is defined as one one hundredth or less of total test time, or about 33 minutes for this test. Instantaneous LNAPL removal is not critical for Bauer and Rice analyses, but does matter for Cooper Jacob analyses. The test duration is often unknown at the start of the test, so remove the target LNAPL volume as rapidly as possible and use the Bauer and Rice method if instantaneous removal is not achieved. How often should the test well be gauged? Gauging frequency tables of expected gauging intervals may be constructed, but will usually require adjustment as the test proceeds. For basic bail down testing, the primary gauging method considered is manual gauging using an electronic interface probe, which can reliably achieve 30 to 60 second intervals. Start out gauging as fast as reliably possible and be creative. For example, Pre-install electronic interface probes below the LNAPL to save time tripping in and out of the well. Most importantly, plot the first 100 minutes of data to establish a trend to predict subsequent gauging frequency. This plot of gauged apparent NAPL thickness versus time can be made in the field on semi-log graph paper. Fit a line through the data and extend it past the 100 minute mark. Expect deviations in the real world and use this as a guideline only. Use target gauging intervals from 5 one hundredths of a foot or 5% of the equilibrium apparent NAPL thickness up to 10% of the equilibrium thickness. For example, if the equilibrium apparent NAPL thickness is 3.09 feet, then 10% is 3 tenths of a foot. For this test, the apparent NAPL thickness should reach 2.2 feet at about 240 minutes. When is the test complete? If the air NAPL and NAPL water interfaces and or the apparent NAPL thickness return to and stabilize at pre-test equilibrium values on a hydrograph, then the test is complete. If the well recharges past the pre-test equilibrium values, then equilibrium is different from the pre-test conditions. If a plot of discharge from the formation into the well versus corresponding drawdown values shows both discharge and drawdown reach zero simultaneously, then the test is complete. If a plot of apparent NAPL thickness versus log time exhibits an S-shaped trend signifying that the apparent NAPL thickness is no longer increasing, the test is complete. In conclusion, remember the two key parameters to be measured in bail down tests. Drawdown is the difference between the equilibrium air NAPL interface and the air NAPL interface at any time t during the test. Discharge is calculated by measuring the change in apparent NAPL thickness and then calculating the volumetric LNAPL increase per unit time. These two key parameters allow calculation of LNAPL transmissivity. We hope this video, sponsored by the American Petroleum Institute, has been informative and useful. For further information, please visit the web pages shown. Questions may be posted to the answer group on www.linkedin.com.